I am now joined by none other than Kevin Holland, of course, fighting Derek Brunson this weekend at the UFC. A busy 2020, right? Five fights, five wins, an amazing year for you. How do you keep that momentum going? It's a very tough opponent this weekend. Uh, You know what? I just keep on swinging and tinging and dinging until I can't no more. Uh, Tough opponent, tough competition. Yeah, just another walk of the park with me, baby. I love it when it's tough. Now, has that been the philosophy? In 2020, you fought five times. I mean, an unbelievable schedule. You were my breakout fighter of the year in 2020. Um, is it about kind of like fighting so much it doesn't get in your head? Is it about staying busy and, you know, no one fight is that important? It's just like you said, keep swinging, keep swinging. Has that momentum been important to you? Yeah, I mean, I guess the momentum does help a lot. But at the end of the day, you know, like you said, you just keep swinging and keep swinging and keep swinging until you're tinging and tacking it. Uh, no, nah, I just love to fight. So you can give me as many fights as possible and I'll be a happy man. You know, and it's like, I just want to scrap. Stay busy is the way to go. Grandma raised a hardworking man and I'm a hard worker. Uh, your last win against Jacare, that hurts because he's my boy. I got to admit, I love Jacare. But uh, a talented guy, right? A perennial contender, very, very well-rounded. You knocked him out in the first round. I know you're a confident guy anyway, but that make you feel as though you're ready for the elite in the division. What did that do for your confidence, if anything? Yeah, I mean, I guess it did a lot for my confidence going into the Brunson fight, uh, especially since, you know, Jacare has finished Brunson twice, you know. So, you know, it's like MMA math doesn't, they say it doesn't add up. But, you know, if we're talking about confidence here. It definitely is a confidence booster going into the Brunson fight. So I guess you could say I was a little bit more eager to fight Brunson right away after that because it's like somebody I already had on the radar. And, and the simple fact that he's lost twice to the man that I just took out in a devastating fashion. It does make it a little bit more interesting to want to go fight Brunson, a little bit more motivated to, to know that I should get the job done in a devastating fashion. Now, he's a great athlete. He's won his last three in a row. He's one of those guys who's found a way to win, has found a resurgence in his career. He's well motivated as well. What do you think the difference is when you guys meet in the cage? I mean, I'm faster, longer, stronger. So, you know, that's usually how it goes. Uh, I, plan on, I plan on being there and being fully active that night. And so as long as I'm there and I'm fully active, I believe he has a hard time. Everybody believes he's a great athlete. I believe I'm a better athlete. Uh, people believe he's a good fighter. I believe I'm a better fighter. People believe that he is entertaining. I believe I am way more entertaining. So when it comes down to the night of the fight, you know, I'm just just trying to make sure it's my night. You know, the grind is real, and I'm willing to go out there and grind with the wrestler. So let's get the job done. He's never been taken down in the UFC, and I will take him down. All right, so Kelvin Gaslam just got announced is stepping in for Paulo Costa against Robert Whitaker. You have Vittori, uh, Martin Vittori, taking on uh, Darren Till later on. Uh, a lot of movement right now, a lot of activity at 185 pounds. Is that the kind of thing you pay attention to? Is an exciting time to be a middleweight? Do you think about these other fights? Are you excited about these other fights? Or is it just, hey, just the guy I have in front of me? I only get excited about the other fights when one person pulls out and there's a chance for me to pull right on in. You know, other than that, I don't get too excited. I love the opportunity to step up and fight somebody last second. But, you know, they say it'll be a little bit harder now that we are where we are in our career. So we'll see what happens. Kevin Gaslam, yes, he's getting the fight. But when one muscle tears, there's always a chance for another one to tear. And when if one tears, Kevin Trailblazer Holland will be there, a.k.a. Big Mouth, a.k.a. I don't care what you call me, just call me for a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Always entertaining every time, man. But that idea that you have to be willing to step in late, you know, we, we've seen it multiple times. Even at the elite level, of course, um, you know, guys stepping in even for title shots. That preparation, is it about always staying ready? Is it about always staying mentally ready? Is it about the ability to get ready late? What's the key about, as you said, being ready to step in late anytime? War ready. You have to be war ready. I think a lot of these guys, they try and be fight ready. But me personally, I try and be war ready. Last year, you know, we didn't know what was going to come of it. Everybody kept, you know, my people were crazy. They were talking about, we're in Texas, like, we're going to war. And I was like, all right, let's get war ready then. Be in the greatest shape of my life. And so that's what it's about. It's about just being in great shape for me. Not the opponent, not this, not that. I'm ready to go anytime, every time, whenever. Call on me like you call on Tyrone, baby, and I'm going to show up. Now, Israel Adesanya, of course, moving up to 205, falling short against Jan Blahovic. He's going to go back to 185, defend the title a bit. That champion up there, that seems to be a crossover star, a lot of people talking about him being the head of the division. Is that something that's good for everyone at 185, having that goal above you to look at? Is that something you think about? Is that a guy you're looking at down the road? Uh, dude, to be honest, I didn't even know he was the 185 champ anymore. As far as I'm concerned, when you lose in sports, you lose, you know, and you're the champ. You're no longer the champ. That's how it is in most sports, but I guess this is an individual sport, and he did go up a weight class. They still consider him the champ. In my eyes, 
He's not the champ right now. But I need to quit talking about that man. Every time I say something about him, all his fans get butt hurt and they go, "Oh, he's an easy hater." I mean, we're in the same weight class and we're supposed to fight each other. What am I supposed to do? Be his best friend? Like it's a roller coaster? I think not. <laughs> so talk about that a little bit. That 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 the entertainment side style, uh, side of this business, right? You want fans to not just want to watch you fight. You want to have them listen to you talk. You want to have them listen to your predictions to get excited about you as a person, not just a fighter. What's the key to that, man? Uh, you know, mm, that's a good question. The key to I ask good questions. I ask the tough ones. Yeah, you do. It's simply just being who I am. You know, it's like uh, they like it, they like it, they love it, they love it. And if they don't, they probably hate it and they're still paying to appreciate it. So that's what it's all about. Um, some are going to like you, some are going to hate you. You know, it just is what it is. I just, uh, just, you know, you know, whatever they do, they do. As long as they, they tune into the fights, uh, it's all that matters. Just tune into the fights. And I, I mean, I hope you guys enjoy me. And if you don't enjoy me, I hope you sincerely hate me enough to still tune in. Now, as a guy who owned a 69 Barracuda, a 68 Firebird, uh, a 64 Falcon, I got to know, uh, another bonus check. What's the upgrade going to your car? Tell the fans about it. Uh, I have a 75 uh, Mopar. I have a, a Plymouth uh, Old Duster. So the old duster is uh, is actually on the way up. Uh, got this little motor, it's close to ten grand. I'm about to put that in there, and then go get the transmission. Um, and then, you know, got some work to do on the bottom, the suspension on the front, and the back. So you know, it's a complete rebuild. You know, and it's like, uh, and I still have to put a paint job on the green machine. I think I want to paint the green machine black with green stripes. So therefore, it still has the green. Um, but yeah, it's plenty of work to be done on these cars, and one bonus is simply not enough. So after Derek Brunson, please line me up with another one. You heard it. He needs to put the money into the car. It's always a pleasure talking to you, Kevin. Best of luck this weekend, my man. Thank you, boss. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.